We are continuing now with football on the Sportsmax Zone, this time from the English Premier League. Arsenal have returned to the top of the table following victory at Wolves on Saturday. They lead Liverpool on goal difference. Jurgen Klopp's Reds produced an improved performance to win 3-1 at Fulham. Manchester City were involved in FA Cup semi-final action and dropped to third. But of course, they have a game in hand. Let's now hear from the Liverpool boss, Jurgen Klopp. Kept it quite exciting. Maybe if he can keep it as exciting, and then in the end, um, Fortuna is maybe then on our side. But we, we don't know. We have to try to win, to win as many games as some are possible, to gain as many points as some are possible. It is an intense season for all of us. Everybody needs luck in moments. Um, each of the three teams need that. Um, so it will be an interesting race, and I'm happy that we are in. So that part I enjoy. So Arsenal finished up a painful week with a loss. Their coach, Mikel Arteta, says he's pleased with the determination and resilience of his squad. The team has shown um, that they still have another step forward to make and, um, and show the resilience and the determination that is needed in these moments to step in and say, I'm here, I'm going to make myself count and uh, I'm going to impact the team. Yeah, that's Mikel Arteta, the gaffer for the Gunners joining us to talk the title race is our European football correspondent, Simon Evans. Simon, we, have, Simon, we haven't spoken to you in a while. Great to have you back on the Sports Mac Zone. Um, a real tight title race this, even though in recent months, every time someone asked me about my thoughts, I said Man City are the safest bet. And at the moment, it continues to look that way. It does, yeah. I mean, if you add that uh, that game in hand, if you count that as three points, then they're top of the league with uh, four to go. And... Uh, and, and a team that um, historically has ended campaigns very well, City, throughout throughout this Pep Guardiola era. They 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 have their little ups and downs, but when it comes to the crunch, they tend to deliver at the at the back end of the season. But uh, it is open, you know. I, I think looking at the games to come, no one has a massive advantage, so it's going to come down to really a test of nerves. I think. Yeah, generally people feel that Arsenal have the the, the tougher of the assignments in the remaining fixtures. I was keen to hear what Arteta said post-match. Your thoughts on his comments about the team showing that they have resilience and they, they have the stomach for the fight? Yeah, I think that's reflecting you know, that disappointment in the Champions League that they had. I think um, that was a real blow for, for, for Arsenal. I think they, they felt that they could, could do something in that competition this year. Um, and it was a blow, and then they know that they're vulnerable in the league. So it, it, it was a test for them, and they came through it. Wolves are, are not an easy team to play at all. They're not doing great in the league, but they're, they're a pretty well-structured side. So that was an important win for them to keep themselves you know, in that position and, and, and keep uh, fending off uh, Manchester City and Liverpool. Yeah, Arsenal, the goal is coming from Odegaard and, of course, Trossard. What, what did you make of the quality of those goals, Simon? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I mean, Odegaard's a lovely player, isn't he? I, yeah. I just really, I really enjoy watching him. I think, uh, you know, he's one of those players who, when when he was went to Real Madrid as a, as a really young teenager, too much was uh, put on his young shoulders. But he's shown it at Arsenal his quality and, and his, his all-round uh, uh, ability. I think he's, uh, Trussard is a player who, who, you know, they've used him quite a lot off, off the bench, haven't they? But he's, he's starting to make... Uh, a broader impact on the team with the injuries there's been from time to time, but they, they move it well around well, Arsenal. You know, there's, there's not a lot wrong with them as a team, but they perhaps just aren't going to quite get over the line again this year. But I, I think they're a good side, and I think, I hope, you know, that they can keep keep building the, the project uh, that they talk about, even if they do have disappointments at the end of the season. Yeah, they started off the season extremely hot, Simon, I have to say that. And they, they came out, you know, as a full force. And to see them at this point in the season, and don't get me wrong, they're doing what they have to do to, of course, get the points and, you know, stay at the top of the table or at least the top two where that EPL table is concerned. But there's just something about them that, you know, I guess maybe it's based on the history, that the fact that, you know, they get so close, but they've never you know, been able to just cross that line, then we saw what happened to them in the Champions League. So I think, you know, that's just that feeling of uncertainty. What I will say, though, is midweek, which is tomorrow, Arsenal play Chelsea and Cole Palmer 
reports are out that you know he may not play because of an illness so can we say this one is done and dusted for Arsenal against Chelsea or no no I don't think in a London derby you could ever say anything's uh, done and dusted um, but you know Arsenal are strong favourites going into that game and Chelsea had their own disappointment at the weekend against City in the FA Cup right. uh, semi-final um, they haven't had a great season it's, it's not been a good season at all for Chelsea but uh, you know you do get strange results as well at the end of the campaign like this. And, and somehow teams teams who have no pressure on them can so, sometimes deliver a, a great performance. But you would think that, uh, that Arsenal should be able to take care of business. Yeah, Simon, I asked Brent Sancho this question last week um, because the Manchester City manager, Pep Guardiola, had said that he knows that his team will be there come the final day of the English Premier League. And I wanted to get an idea of whether Brent felt that of the three teams battling for the title, one might fade away before we get to the final day. And he said, if anyone, Liverpool. And I wanted to know what you think um, about what Brent had to say a week ago. I don't think any of them are going to fade away. I think it will be you know, very, very close right till the end um, because I think they are the three best teams um, in, in England by a good stretch. I think, you know, you look at the teams below them competing for the Champions League places and, and there's, a, there's quite a gulf, I think, in the class between that top three. So if you were to pick one and say they might fade away, I would probably say Arsenal. But I don't, I don't think they will. I don't think any of them will. I think it'll be very tight right until the end. Why Arsenal, though? I don't know. I think maybe it's a mentality thing. You know, and I think it's, it's, it's also quite a tough running they've got there. I mean, Spurs, that's a derby game. If they, were to, if they were to come out of that on the wrong side, the psychological impact of losing to Tottenham in a title running game would be, you know, infinitely more painful than that Champions League defeat even. So, you know, I think, you know, United is the penultimate game. Everton at the end of the season shouldn't be too bad. But, you know, who knows what, which Manchester United is going gonna, is gonna to show up for them. But I just think of the, of the three, I would think that if somebody was to wobble, it would be them. But I don't think anyone will. Yeah, let's talk about Liverpool then, shall we? Because it was an important game uh, that they had at the weekend. And Jurgen Klopp made what I consider to be some um, real brave decisions, including leaving Mohamed Salah out of the starting eleven. Your thoughts? Yeah, it was. It was a surprise decision, that. But I guess, you know, he's looking at... Uh, energy levels and fitness levels and thinking about that that running I mean it could be he's looking at form with some players but I think with Salah you know even if he doesn't score for two or three games you're always going to have him in the in, in the team if you if, if you need the points and they're going to need him for this running it is, it is a tight schedule with a midweek game coming up now and then the weekend as well so um I think that might have been a factor with that decision. Yeah, could it be that Mohamed Salah just hasn't been good enough in, in recent matches and maybe even for the entire season, if you think about it, and, and maybe Jurgen Klopp is realising that and realising that he has a few other players like Diego Jota who got the start yesterday who are still energetic and who have been a lot more clinical than the man who they have depended on for so many years. Yeah, and we've seen with Klopp in the past that he's been willing to uh, to, to leave out players even, even with great reputations, haven't we? I mean, Firmino was left out of the side for quite a while before he, he was moved on. I mean, people thought for a while that that front three of Liverpool, of, of uh, you know, Sadio Mane, Salah and Firmino, was such a great front three. They thought that was going to be there for, for four or five years and, and Klopp was quite willing to, to break that up and let players go uh, and start again. And, and it is a different front line that they have now with Darwin Nunes there. And as you say, Jota, uh, Diaz, different different players who bring different things. So, you know, it's not that Mohamed Salah is disposable. He's, I think he's still a match winner and uh, you want to have him involved. But you're right. He has other options now as well. So he can rotate things around. And Jota always looks like he's going to score in every single game he plays, doesn't he? Yeah, you're very much right, and it's just been the injuries that has kept him off the score sheet. But whenever he's fit and he's out there, um, he gets opportunities and he puts them away. I saw a stat the other day that said it was the most clinical of all the Liverpool strikers, so uh, says a lot about the quality that he 
possesses. Um, and by the way, Darwin Nunes didn't start yesterday either, but that one wasn't a surprise. Fully expected that he would be left on the bench for that Fulham game. Um, quick word on Aston Villa and Leon Bailey, who continues to perform brilliantly for his team. And a goal and an assist for Aston Villa, keeping them in the top four, even though um, Tottenham have a couple of games in hand. But Villa doing what they need to do to be in Europe, in the Champions League specifically next season. Yeah, what a story that would be. You know, I mean, Villa, of course, won the old European Cup uh, back in the early 1980s, uh, but never been in there in the Champions League era. It would be a fantastic achievement for them uh, and, and a deserved one because I think Unai Emery has done an absolutely amazing job uh, to take. You know, remember he came in after Steven Gerrard and, and, and Villa were wobbling towards the other end of the table. Um, so he's done a fantastic uh, job there. And Leon Bailey keeps delivering. I just uh, wish he'd sort out his uh, problems with the national team, whoever's to blame for those, and, and be able to deliver it for Jamaica as well. Yeah, well, the Jamaica Football Federation president says he's confident that they will work out the issues with Leon Bailey. Simon, as always, it's been a pleasure chatting with you, and I'm pretty sure uh, we'll chat soon as uh, we see how things unfold with the English Premier League. All the best. Cheers. Yeah, Lance and Mariah, what an end to the English Premier League season. Um, I know, of course, Mariah thinks that Manchester City will go all the way. Correct. I am asking you guys the question as well. If one team is to falter and not be there on the final day, who do you think that will be? Arsenal. Why? Because of history. They have the tougher fixtures, let me say that. The, the teams that they have to meet um, as of now, yeah. they have some tough ones. So I looked at all of the fixtures and I think um, Manchester City has an easy one except Tottenham. I think Liverpool should be fine as well. So I think if I have to pick from those three, it will be Arsenal. What about you? Yeah, I would agree with that because mostly because of what they have in the front of them to, to, yeah. to play. So. Um, but Chelsea, top. Tottenham, Manchester United, yeah. all to come for Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah, and remember, they've been playing in the Champions League. They must be exhausted. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> break time. All right. It's break time. Yeah, not giving Arsenal a break. <laughs>